Hi everyone, this is Roxas1359. Welcome back to Let's Play Bioshock 2. Last time, we ended up completing Popper's Drop, forever glitching out the music to being the big sister fight. Oh, I probably explained that in the post commentary. Anyway, off screen, I did quite a few things. I ended up grinding quite a bit of money, but I also fully researched up the big daddies so that I could get the arms race tonic. That was made by Ryan Industries, actually, not, you know, Fontaine Futuristics, like how most of these were or Sinclair Solutions, as most of the other ones were. No, the Arms Race Tonic is an interesting tonic and is very beneficial, which is why I went out of my way to do it. What the Arms Race Tonic does is it allows you to find more ammunition off the corpses of enemies. It's a very helpful tonic, which is why I went after it. In fact, it's actually extremely easy to do inside of Popper's Drop for the fact that the Rosie Big Daddies will constantly respawn. Not only that, you could actually get the Rosies in a stun lock with your drill. And they will only do a little bit of damage, only being able to swat you. So it's very easy. Not only did I end up fully researching them, I also fully researched security to get the Deadly Machines tonic. That tonic was created by, I believe that one was Sinclair Solutions. That tonic basically powers up your friendly turrets, friendly security bots, friendly cameras to doing more damage. Which is something that is very, very helpful. I wasn't able to get more on a Brute Splicer, unfortunately, but, you know, that's better than nothing. And obviously, the Thuggish and Lead Heads are already done. So, pretty much, we are done with Popper's Drop for right now, so let's move on to a new area. So, I've been working on the railroad under the sea. I can't go backwards to old places because of limitations. Look at the unloaded textures in my stupid train car. Hear me, O oh ye who would murder the Lamb of God. Ye shall never reach her God. Hey, is that a torpedo? Ah! Amazing how it didn't blow up! Nighty night. Kid, come on, wake up now. There you are. I thought you rode that torpedo into the grate hereafter. I'm in Dionysus Park now. Train cars are shambles, leaking air. Whole damn place is flooded and sealed. But there's a pumping station back there on Siren Alley, and I believe you could jerry-rig it to drain the park out. That'd let you stroll right inside. Get to those pumps and hurry. Okay. So, surprisingly enough, all that torpedo did was just knock me out of the front of the train. Didn't look like the model blew up or anything. So, we're under the ocean again, and we're in one of two of the underwater sections in this game to where we can get collectibles that are one-time only events. Now, on the ocean floor, there are sea slugs that produce atom, if you remember from the first game. And the atom is more concentrated and produced more when it is inside of little girls. Well, these are those atom slugs right here. There are three of them inside this section, and there are two more later in the game, giving you a grand total of five. Each one will give you a total of ten. Um, Adam each time, and there's that new guy again. Hmm. Something's telling me we're going to be seeing more of him. So there's only five in the game. I see Father Wales has parted you from your craft, and yet you cling to life. Congratulations. Thank Today, you. Today, Delta, you meet a man who has no fear of death. And for Eleanor, he would burn with a smile. That's disturbing. Anyway, there are three Atom Slugs in this section, and there are two more later in the game in which we're going to have to go underwater again, giving you a grand total of five. I believe during development there were more underwater sections that were actually planned for Bioshock 2, but they were ultimately scrapped, I believe. Either way, though, now that we're done with this underwater section, this one you can return to at any time in which you're going in between... Uh, Siren Alley and our ultimate goal, which is to get to Dionysus Park, where Sinclair is. But for right now, welcome to Siren Alley, everyone. To where we're going to find the new Big Daddy. 
Meet the Rumbler Big Daddy. The Rumbler is actually based off the designs of a scrap Big Daddy that was supposed to be appearing in the first game. I actually forget the development name of that Big Daddy, but the Rumbler is reminiscent of that, but has a few alterations even then. Inside of Bioshock 1, the Big Daddy that the Rumbler is based off of was supposed to have both a rocket launcher and a hook hand. The hook hand would give it powerful melee attacks, while the rocket launcher is a god dang rocket launcher. In this game, they do not have the hook hands anymore. Instead, they have what are mini turrets that they will be able to deploy. The rumblers pretty much will only do attacks that are long range. They have no real melee capabilities. So it's easy to stun lock one, actually. In fact, it's highly recommended to stun lock one, but I will be doing it later, and that looked like a piece of wood hit me in the face. Now, interesting thing about that fight right there, no matter what, no matter how many times that Rumbler Big Daddy gets shot by those splices right there, it will not lose health. It is scripted for it to not lose health. That hurt like crazy. Great, we got more splicers. I need to actually get my rivet gun. There we go. Oh, I think it... If they're not careful, they're going to hit that one. I think the supposed to end up hitting that one by accident, but that might have just been me getting caught. Basically, the Rumbler will not lose health in that... Oh, crud, they broke that. I was going to hack that. Um, they will end up getting no health taken off from there because that is a scripted event. That... Oh, sweet. Thank you. So, just keep that in mind. Alright, so, what is it that we have to find here in Siren Alley? Well, besides, you know, finding a way to get to Dionysus Park... We have quite a few collectibles to get here. In Dionysus Park, we're going to be going to later, we're going to be having quite a few things, but this is going to have an area that's going to be a little bit different as to why we can't backtrack to this area as opposed to other areas. So, for us, let's go through probably some of the little collectible list. Well, you can see one of the tonics is right there. Inside of Siren Alley, there are a total of five tonics. One of them will be obtained by dealing with the little sisters, and by that you have to rescue them. I'm pretty sure you cannot get this one if you do it any other way. The other one uh, we're going to be finding around in the area. We have one plasmid that we're going to find. We have 20 audio diaries. We have two Power to the People stations. And we have three big daddies and little sisters to deal with. They will all be rumblers in this area. And pretty much for the rest of the game, we're going to be dealing with nothing but rumblers. But here we have a silent god. This is by Simon Wales. Simon Wales is an interesting character. Basically, Simon Wales was one of the two architects of Rapture, actually. Siren Alley here is basically the olden-style architecture that was for Rapture that was later changed to better fit the meaning for the siren in that whorehouses. Lots and lots of whorehouses. Uh, later on, though, we're going to be finding more about what happened between Simon and his brother, Daniel Wales, as they were both twins who both worked here on Rapture's Founding. So, I'm pretty sure we're going to get more into that later, but for right now, I need to beat you up. And I think I hear another person. Ah, there they are. Hold on. Uh, oh, it's, I can't activate the spinel if I'm... Decided. So, there we go. Uh oh, the big daddy's gonna come in here. Please. Okay, good. The water stopped electrifying. I don't want to piss off that big daddy yet. I'm gonna be dealing with the big daddies a little bit later on. But right now, we are inside the Mermaid Lounge, which is pretty much a bar that has gambling inside it. This is the only spot in Rapture for Bioshock 2 that actually has uh, vending. Vending machines? No, if this was the only place in Rapture that had vending machines, that would be a goddamn difficult game. No, this is the only place in Rapture that will have slot machines, actually. Now, in the past, I used to think that there was another trophy for doing another gambling section, but there isn't in this game, so don't waste your money on it. I mean, you can if you want, but again, it's up to random luck, and you'll lose more money than really it would be worth for it. So... There is another reason why I'm obviously inside here, because, I mean, if gambling was the only reason I'd be inside here, what would be the point, really? Nope, this is actually the area in which we can get our first Power to the People station. So, as you can see, there are some splices that are jumping down there, but I want to go inside here real quick, because I think 
I want to deal with some of the annoying guests that are inside here. So how about you? And now I think there will be one more guy that might end up coming in through there. Yes, there he is right there. So once we deal with all of them, there might be four people that end up coming in here. Because I think in the past I've had it that I've been ambushed after I did that. And this, this turret's not even firing. Well, he went out, but I'd like to, you know, deal with him. And I just got a new type of ammunition, actually. The Phosphorus Buck for the shotgun. So what does the Phosphorus Buck do? The Buck's ammo sticks to its targets and causes fiery explosions. It's one of my more favorite ammunition types, actually. It's a really good type of ammunition that's just a lot of fun to use. And yep, that, that Rumbler is inside here. I find it interesting, though. With a name like the Rumbler, you'd think that, you know, they'd be more melee-oriented. Or... I honestly thought they would have used, like, the original concept design for the Bouncer Big Daddy. For those of you who don't know, the Bouncers went through multiple different phases in what their primary weapon was going to be. One of the weapons was going to be the pre... I believe it was Alpha Stage, in which it was. How ironic, I'm an Alpha Series Big Daddy. Was that the Bouncers were going to have, basically, a... I don't know how to really describe the weapon on what it would be. It's sort of two big metal fists, I suppose you can call it. But it was later changed on that they would have the drill. And while they were finalizing the design for the drill, it had quite interesting placeholders on where the drill was. Uh, one of the ones that I remember the most is the giant marshmallow. So, inside here we have an audio diary, the Plasmid Shipment. Uh, so let's listen on to this one. Listen, my supplier's got a new shipment of plasmids coming in, and I need you to pick them up from the lab in Hedon Plaza. There's a hidden switch to open the back door. It's tucked away under the cash register in the shop front. And don't let nobody see you do it. Otherwise, <laughs> we'll have splicers crawling all over the damn place trying to get a taste. So, that's something that you will keep in mind for later, I hope, which is basically, you know, that's your little hint that this supposed store has something. And here we have an audio diary on the Rumbler. This is by Gilbert Alexander. The rate of sister loss has become unacceptable as big daddies are brought down like elephants under a pack of hyenas. In response, we've begun production of a newly designed big daddy model, nicknamed the Rumbler. He launches high-explosive munitions to disperse groups of splicers, followed by miniature automated turrets to mop up the stragglers. Our tests find that the Rumbler's performance is highly effective, if messy. In Rapture's arms race, splicers aren't the only ones that are evolving. Yet surprisingly, the Rumblers are really the only new type of Big Daddy besides the Big Sisters that we're actually going to be dealing with inside the game. I would have thought they would have put in some more Big Daddies, but yeah, there isn't. There is another type of Big Daddy that is inside of the Minerva's Den DLC, but I'm not counting that because that was DLC that was added on. It's not in the base game. Part of me wants to take care of this Rumbler right now. Uh, how many armor pieces do I have? I don't have nearly enough to take this one out. It's better to take on armor piercing round and use telekinesis on the Rumbler. Um, I'll do it after I deal with the power of the people station. That sounds like a good plan. So, let's go on down right here to where there's an audio diary. Farther to Fall. This is by Sinclair talking about basically what Siren Alley is all about and how decrepit it's become, really. So, really, you will end up getting attacked the moment you activate this power to the people station. So, yeah. So, we have our multiple different things. We can do a river gun heat upgrade, our drill damage increase, a ricochet, which is, for this one, I believe you have to get both of the other upgrades in order to do it. Uh, first impact, causing the bullets to ricochet. Yes, this one you need the other two upgrades for the machine gun to do. And we have our clip size for our shotgun and the shotgun damage. Shotgun's still pretty effective right now, but one thing I really want to do is I want to do my drill damage up upcrease. Increase. So, I go closer this way, and it shuts. And there's going to be somebody who comes down, I believe, to attack us. 
so he's setting that up. That's going to explode. And there we go. Ah, oh, great. He reignited the fire. How am I going to get out? Dang it. Come on, man. Why you got to do this? All right. So that takes care of that. Ouch. Oh, come on. There's more. Uh, electro bolt and water. Electricity. I can't reach. Ow. Come on. There we go. That's not... You're not dead yet. Yeah, just heal yourself and then get killed. Is the rumbler still inside here? Because I want to take out that rumbler. Mainly just so then I can get the little sister, because then that's one less big daddy to deal with. No, I don't hear... I don't hear his footsteps in here, so he's outside. There he is right there. All right. I think I will take him out right now. So, let us... Put on telekinesis and drill him. You will not get Mr. B. As you can see, the drill damage is doing quite a bit to him. And he is out of here. I didn't even use up all the fuel and he is doing a fancy jig. So let's grab the first of the little sisters of this area. Now, rumblers will always have mini turret ammunition on them, and since pretty much this is the first time we have mini turrets, what weapon will actually, you know, throw them? That's what the bottom ammunition for the, you know, remote hacking tool is for. Kind of weird, I have to admit. It's, it, it seems weird that it's like that, but, eh, oh well. I'll do gathers in a little bit. First things first, I want to collect a few more things here and there before we do that. For one, I want to get that tonic that is inside right down here. So, drop down. And I need to use incinerate. Uh, Anti-personnel rounds. I can't carry any more of those. Um, they're everywhere. Dang. So much machine gun ammo. I don't need machine gun ammo. I have it filled. I think I just heard a splicer. I didn't see them, but... She don't even have to look at the baby. She won't even know it's there. Hmm. Baby, huh? Well... Bye-bye. <laughs> so, let's grab this. Misbehaving. This is by Eleanor Lamb. This is basically Lamb saying about how she was... It's, it's Lamb when she's a child. Basically saying how she's getting yelled at by her mother for misbehaving. That she has to set an example because she is the future. It's... It's rather cute. Really, the Eleanor Lamb ones are nice, but I feel bad for her because she's just, you know, got a terrible mother. So, here we have our first tonic of the area, the Handyman. New tonic, Handyman. When your security friends take a bullet for you, put them back in tip-top shape with a bit of Eve. How about no? I kind of, you know, can just get new ones. I don't care if they get hit. I can get new ones just as easy. So, in the meantime... Go to the cash register, and let's hack this door so we can get the heck out of here. Doots, doots. There we go. That takes care of that. And pretty much for right now, that is all we can do in the first area of Siren Alley. It's that. The the family. What the heck was that? A spider splicer. Mother of mercy, I think that was Simon Wales. What's he done to himself? He and his brother were Rapture's architects. But when Doc Lamb came along, Simon got religion. He's got a kind of church down in the pumping station. Expect a reckoning when you arrive. Well, that's good to know. That's that's fun to know. But go inside here, and we get a new tonic. I think Mother knows I'm helping you like this. Oh, plasmid. She's accelerating my treatments. Don't give up on me. I won't, otherwise I'll die. So, here we have a returning plasmid from the first game, the Security Command. So, new plasmid, Security Command. Take control of Rapture Security with Security Command. Enemy Security and your own friendly bots and turrets will follow the blue ball and attack with deadly force. So, pretty much, just like in the first game, I'm not going to use this. 
I think it's a useless tonic, to be quite honest. I think it's rather useless. I mean, it helps to direct a camera fire, like, if you're in trouble, but more often than not, I'm the one who has everything, so it doesn't really matter. In the meantime, though, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hack this camera that's right here. There's an enemy behind me. There's an enemy behind me, isn't there? Uh-oh. No, oh, come on. I was hoping to work on that one. I was hoping to... There we go. I'm just get inside there. It's dancing, Daddy. Dancing. That's my girl. Watch as he boogaloos. So, going up this way, there's going to be a... Turret. So, let's hack it. And... Oh, great, that line, huh? I hate that why would you bring a kid line with simple fact that whenever I cut out the gathers, all the splicers, well, female splicers will say is, why would you bring a kid? I don't know, maybe because I want the atom. Maybe because she's the only one that can harvest the atom. God, it's just so annoying to listen to that. All right, I think that's done. Yep. So here, if we go over here, we have to find the keypad code to this. Well, I don't... I happen to know what it is. But, here we have Lamb Salvation by Father Daniel, Wales. You and I drafted Rapture's blueprint together. Wales and Wales, architects. Do you remember? But Andrew Ryan led us astray, my brother. Turned us from the Almighty. Dr. Lamb offers you salvation, Daniel. I ask only for proof that the barest flicker of faith remains in you. I left a gift for you at the Pink Pearl, in your offices. Find the code on it, brother. We shall pray together for your sorry soul. So... I've got the Ooh. maddening notion that I owe you my life, stranger. Such as it is. I'm sending you a care package to the new mower along the way. I'd appreciate it if you didn't tell Dr. Lamb. I won't. So, now that we've had that, this Brute Splicer will be right here opening this door up for us. So now let's take on this Brute Splicer. And damage him extensively like so. Using up the remaining bits of our drill ammunition. And there we go. Okay, I thought there was something else there. So, if you leave Grace alive, she will send you some supplies in this Numo, which are two auto-hack darts, six phosphorus bucks, and everything. Now, I know the code. The code does not change for that door. The reason why I didn't just instantly open up the door to gain access to the other half of Siren Alley is because it will actually skip a bunch of radio message dialogues that happen in the game. And while it's beneficial to sequence break at times, sometimes... You know, you don't want to do that. So, what I'm going to do right now is just go around here. And I think I might end up doing the two gathers that are right here. Just so that, you know, I can have that done. And once we deal with the little sister that is with it, we will actually get a special prize. So, first off, I think I'm going to deal with this gather right here. Now, this gather is an interesting gather that actually in my practice file is what caused me to get the... Master Protector trophy. What ended up happening was I ended up um, basically the game glitched out on that gather. I'm just taking this guy out right now. What ended up happening was during that gather, no enemy came down from right here and attacked me. And none of them got behind me. I encountered no enemies at all. It was rather weird, but I rather liked it. So, going to cut ahead real quick as I gather this atom. And I better take out my anti-personnel around, seeing as how they're everyone, I could just replenish them. So, cutting ahead real quick. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, I'm back. That actually went rather well. I used two of my things, but it wasn't too bad. So, in the meantime, right now, there's another rumbler right there. I'm surprised he hasn't summoned a little sister yet. Normally, they do by now, but, eh, oh well. So, let's recharge a little bit, and then we're gonna go and do the other gather that's in this area right now. Because then once I do that, I'll be able to get a special little prize. So, 
let us buy... Uh, how many am I going to need? Uh, that I'll buy two just in case. And drill fuel. Let's uh, restock on drill fuel. So I think I'm good. Oh, I see a person there. Unfortunately, I won't have the protection of my, uh, you know, turret this time because my turret ended up exploding. But, eh, it, you win some, you lose some. So, right here is the second gather that we're going to do. So, cutting ahead real quick. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm back. Bales's brother Daniel operates the Pink Pearl now. That's a high-class brothel, son, on your side of the door. See if you can find that code with him. Good to know, but I ended up finishing up the second gather. I had to deal with a few things, and while I was actually doing it, uh, that rumbler I said that hadn't summoned a little sister yet ended up summoning one, and some of the splices during the gather ended up, I think, attacking that big daddy. So, because he was, he was getting, he was getting pissed, and so something ended up happening. I don't know where that one is, but let's actually see. Where is he? There he is right there. Does he have any lower health? Let's see. No, I'm not, I'm not seeing any lower health. So, let's go and turn in this little sister right now, and then we will get a reward, and then I'll end off the part. So, grab that. And, yeah, spider splicers are back. I'll go into what we get from them in the next episode, but let's rescue her. So, if you've been rescuing all the little sisters, this will make your fourth one. After the fourth one, we'll get a message. You're not alone, Father. The girls you rescued are on your side. Check the Gatherer's Garden for a package. Good to know. That was... Oh, that was weird. But congratulations, you have found your first reward from the Little Ones for saving Little Sisters. You get that whenever you rescue three Little Sisters, you will end up getting a prize, I believe. So, what do we have in this one? We have the Proud Parent Tonic, $38 and 80 Adam. Our main thing is the Adam and the Proud Parent Tonic. So, new tonic, Proud Parent. Get even more out of your time spent with your little sister with pr Proud Parent. Any little sisters working for you will gather Adam slightly more Adam from every corpse. That is a very, very good one to get, ladies and gentlemen. It is a very good one to get, and it's what I will be going after. But, anyway, guys, I'm going to end off right here. You want to rock this 1359? Don't be surprised if you see this guy dead in the next part. See you guys next time.